In the last video, we took a look at very cheap, well-built Arduino Nano clones. And like most clones, they came with the old 328 bootloader installed, which has some known issues. Today, we'll look at how to install the new OptiBoot bootloader to bring these clones up to current Arduino standards. This method also works to reinstall or upgrade bootloaders on almost any type of Arduino using the AT Mega chipset whether they are genuine or clones. The only requirement is at least one working device to be set up as a programmer. In our case, these came in a set of three, so we'll use one as the programmer to upgrade the other two, and then switch them around to program the first. So we'll set these up on a breadboard to make it a little easier. We'll use this one here as the programmer. And we'll take our first to be programmed, set it up on the other side, and make the connections. Now I'll put the wiring diagram up on the screen. I'm just using jumper cables to make this easier. And since I do this a lot, I use these same jumper cables and I just label what pins they go to with the other side heading to the in-circuit programmer pins on the device itself to be programmed. So why would you want to upgrade the bootloader? There's some known issues with the old bootloader. One of them being the watchdog timer may reset the device unexpectedly. The new bootloader takes up a lot less space than the old, leaving more room for your sketches. And the new bootloader is also twice as fast to upload a sketch. The old bootloader uses only 56K speeds, while the new one is 115K baud. So it takes just a few minutes here to upload the new. So why not? So we have our one that will be used as the programmer. We have the one to receive the new bootloader set up here using the ISP pins. And once we get this one flash, we'll change it out for this one. And once these two are upgraded, we'll take one of them, put it in this position here, set it to be a programmer and move this guy on this side so we can upgrade it and we'll have all three at the newest firmware version. So we'll get this plugged into the computer and take a look at the Arduino IDE side. So with our Nano plugged in, we'll open up the Arduino IDE and go to File, Examples, Arduino ISP and open the Arduino ISP sketch. This will allow us to set the first Arduino as an in-circuit programmer. Make sure we have our board selected. We are still using the old bootloader, COM port, and the usual programmer setup. Then we'll upload this sketch. And now we'll be able to use this Arduino as a programmer to upload the bootloaders to the next Arduinos. We'll go to Tools, change our programmer to Arduino as ISP. From here, it could be a little tricky. If you were to go to Tools and choose Burn Bootloader, it will burn the bootloader to the next Nano that we have connected. However, it will still burn the old bootloader. If we change the processor to the AT Mega 328, which is the new OptiBoot bootloader that we want, it will fail. And that's because the Arduino IDE is still communicating with the programmer Nano, and it will think the programmer has the new bootloader. So it will try to communicate with it at 115K baud rate, which will end up failing because our programmer is indeed still on the old bootloader who will only transmit at 56K. So we'll need to edit the board's text file for the Arduino IDE in order to tell it to use the new bootloader whenever we select the burn bootloader option 
for an Arduino Nano. Whether it's a genuine or a clone, it doesn't matter. In Windows, you can find it at this path. Under Linux, the file's located here. So we'll open our board's text file and just search for nano dot bootloader. It'll be around there somewhere. Scrolling down, we see the Arduino Nano with 18 mega 328p. And here is where it points to the bootloader file. While underneath, we have the Arduino Nano 328p old bootloader. And again, the same bootloader path is pointing to the old bootloader. So what we want to do is just change this section of the old bootloader to use the file of the new OptiBoot. So we'll just replace this whole piece with the OptiBoot. If you're worried about overwriting things for the future, you can use a double pound and a space to comment out the line, then copy this setting back underneath, and then make your change. This way, if anything goes wrong, to make things easier, you can just delete this new line that we added, uncomment the old, and you'll be back to where you were. So now save this. And we'll go back to the Arduino IDE. IDE has to be restarted. So we'll close and reopen. This will force our changes into effect. So back in tools, we still have nano and the old bootloader selected. Our programmer set as Arduino ISP. And it's important, you want Arduino as ISP, not Arduino ISP. Now we can go back to tools and choose burn bootloader. And we can see that the file being used is the OptiBoot new firmware that we wanted, even though we had the old selected. So now back on our bench, we'll remove the ISP pins, turn this around, and we'll, and we'll test that this worked. We'll load the Blink script. Now we will choose the 18 mega 328p as our processor using the new bootloader. Compile and upload. And we can see the upload worked. Notice the baud rate for uploading the sketch is now at 115200, double the speed of the old bootloader. If we now switch back to the board we're using as a programmer, and upload the same blink sketch with the same settings, you'll see it fails. And that's again because this board is using the old bootloader, which wants to transmit at 56K speeds. So if we change our processor back to old bootloader, upload now, you'll see it works fine. And if we look at the speed, baud rate 57600. So you can see how easy this is to do. I'm going to load the ISP programming sketch back, remove the board that we just upgraded, connect the next board in place, burn the bootloader, and then swap the boards around. So we now have two Arduino clones that have the new bootloader in place. This one that we've been using as the programmer still has the old bootloader. So we'll remove it. Connect the ISP headers. and insert one of our upgraded boards in its place, making sure we align the pins correctly. And once again, back in the Arduino IDE, 
we'll have to reload this Arduino sketch to the new board we just swapped in, but we'll want to change our processor to 18 mega 328 since we're no longer using the old bootloader. Upload the Arduino ISP sketch and burn bootloader. Now all three of our boards are using the OptiBoot bootloader and essentially these clones are no different than a genuine Arduino Nano other than the CH340 chip used for USB communication. This also works to program any type of Arduino or clone that uses the 18 mega chips or the 18 mega chips directly. For the more advanced users out there, loading the Arduino ISP sketch to a board also allows you to use AVRDU directly with that Arduino connected to another 18 mega chip. So you don't have to rely on the Arduino IDE. And once you're done, since the board you used as a programmer was simply uploading a programming sketch, you can overwrite it and the board goes back to being a normal Arduino that you can use in your projects just as, as always. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And as always, please like and subscribe.